Hey YouTube, I got a different kind of video. Today we're going to be looking at trying to run 128 gigabytes of memory on a Ryzen 9 7950X based system. So um, if you do have an AM5 system, regardless of whether it's a Ryzen 5, 7, or 9, um, or if you're holding out for the 3D vCache CPUs, which might actually be more uh, a lot better for this sort of setup because if you have the 3db cache the ram speed doesn't matter so if you just want cheap dense ram or i guess if you want to go with like you know four dims and you don't want to spend a ton of money on ram but you do want to run like 128 gigs maybe the vcache cpus will make more sense because they're less dependent on high speed memory to get the full performance so we're gonna put these in and see how well how long it takes for it to boot up uh, and see what kind of speeds we can get out of this. So if you like this content, stay tuned. When you install the RAM, since it's DDR5, it's a little bit more uh, harder to press in compared to DDR4 because the pin contacts don't go all the way through on the back of the motherboard. So don't be afraid to just kind of push them until you feel that they click in and they, they're solid. You can see we have 32 times 4 on here, so we have a full 128 gigabyte configuration. So let's go ahead and put the CPU fan back on and stuff here, and then power this thing up. All right, here we're going to do a, a post time test. So there goes the power button. So all the RAM is in. Code 15 on the Aorus Master means memory training. So we should be able to see how long it takes. We're going to do this in real time just to give everybody an idea of how long it takes to post for the first time from a cold boot on 128 gigabytes of memory. So I will note that this, for those wondering what memory we're using, this is G-Skill Ripjaws S5. It is 5600 MHz RAM, SK Hynix. The timings are 30, 36, 36, 89 at 1.25 volts. So it's not like super high in memory, uh, but it's not like, you know, bare bones, lowest frequency possible. You know, it's not it's not JDEC RAM, but we're probably most likely going to be able to run it at a JDEC speed. At least that's my hope. So we're just going to let this go and see how long it takes. And this is on the Agisa 1003 BIOS patch A plus D. So we'll see how long it takes to post. So just kind of going through here, uh, this will probably post, I'm going to guess, at 3600 MHz. And I'm going to try to get it to go to. 4800 and see if that's actually stable. So it looks like it's getting somewhere now. All right, there my Avermedia media capture card. There's the post. So that's good. Let me get into the BIOS and see what it actually posted at. So looking at this, it actually posted to 5200 megahertz, which is what I had it set to originally uh, when I was running 64 gigabytes of memory as a test with this kit. So that's that's interesting. So you can see here the memory is rated for 5600, 30, 36, 36, 89. Um, I manually set it to 52. Now look, we have the full 128 gigs right here. So I'm going to go ahead and run with this and see if it's stable. Just to kind of go in here and look I want to see the DDR5 voltage. So it did it did post all of it to the 1.25 volts. So that's very interesting. So we're going to go ahead and get into Windows and see if it's actually stable. Um, I somehow doubt it, although I'd be amazed if this actually is fully stable at 5200. If it's at 5200, which is what you're supposed to be able to do official spec with two DIMMs, and I can do this at 128 gigs at four DIMMs, then that means I've got a pretty good IMC. So let's uh, let's run with it and see what happens. Alright, so we're in Windows now. and You guys can see 
I am able to post a full 128 gigabytes of memory um, at 5200 megahertz and I'm, so basically I'm using the exact same timings basically the XMP profile is loaded but the only difference is that instead of it running at 5600 megahertz I'm running it at 5200 megahertz um, because that is AMD's official max spec for the processor when running uh, one DIMM per channel but we're actually running two DIMM per channel and these are dual rank DIMMs because these are 32 gig DIMMs you can see it's SK Hynix um, and I'm running it at the 30, 36, 36, 89, 125 yeah, 30, 36, 89, 125 so it's basically running at the XMP profile with the one exception being that it is running a little bit slower um, but I'm going to test it at this slower speed because if this works and, and even better if I can leverage uh, S3 sleep mode and resume uh, and everything's stable after waking from sleep and games aren't crashing or anything then you know that means that uh, you can actually run 128 gigabytes of RAM on uh, on an AM5 platform with the later with the later BIOSes. I will note that I am not running the latest BIOS. This is uh, a GISA 1003 patch D. I think A plus D is what it says, but it is not the latest one because 1004 is technically the latest one. Um, but hey, if this works, I'm probably going to stick with this for a while. So uh, we're going to run some tests. We're going to fire up like Forspoken and some some games that are very, very uh, memory heavy and see what we get. Just also point out here, um, for those wondering, we are running the U-Clock or memory control clock in the 1 to 1 ratio because this is 2600. You multiply that by 2, that gives you uh, 5200, which is the RAM's uh, speed. That are running so this is this is the one to one ratio u clock equals mem clock so it's really nice to see fabric clock you know just two thousand whatever um, but that's really really good okay so you can see that it did blue screen on me while trying to load for spoken so that means that the memory is not stable so we're going to have to back this down to forty eight hundred and see if it will be stable at forty eight hundred Okay, I basically went back in the BIOS, set it down to 4800 megahertz now. So you can see, just to kind of show what we're running at now. So we have a full 128 gigabytes of RAM uh, with the uncore frequency. So the U clock is 2400 now. So if you double that, that's 4800. So it's still one to one ratio. Same timings from the XMP profile. Um, you know everything else was on auto for the sub timings which I don't think they had to really change uh, the motherboard probably just chose whatever um, but basically you know SK Hynix seems like it's the way to go so let's now try like I said on the live stream Forspoken is an excellent tool to test for memory stability so we're gonna run Forspoken see if we can get into the game now um, or if it's still unstable. So it looks like it's doing a lot better now. It's actually loading the game, so that's really good. So last time, it literally just hard froze. So <laughs> it just blue screened at 5200 megahertz. So if I can get it to be 100% stable for streaming and content creation with 128 gigs at 4800 megahertz, I'm okay with that because, uh, as you can see, I'm gaming at 4K basically native resolution so let's go ahead and get into the game and see if it's actually stable wow it loaded up pretty quick so so it looks pretty good to me so far but we'll see because this game is an excellent tool to test for stability of the system and i think we're, we're running it at native resolution at 4k so this is a super high-end system when you're gaming at 4k you know the ram isn't really going to make that much of a difference yes it will make a very very small difference we're talking like one to maybe three percent depending on the title because most of the time you're going to be gpu bound anyway so at this resolution um, unless you're using like upscaling technology or something like that um, but for what we're doing this and uh, live stream content creation you know 128 gigs of ram for a 32 thread processor yeah, that's four gigabytes per thread 
So that's pretty good in terms of how you're scaling out the hardware there. So that's why I kind of wanted to run 128 gigabytes of memory. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and do a little bit of testing here. I'm not going to bore you guys with a super long video of me just kind of running around and exploring the world. Um, but we'll come back in a conclusion here in a little bit and see uh, what the verdict is on how stable the system is at 128 gigs at 4800 megahertz. All right, so the verdict is at 4800 MHz. The memory is stable at 128 gigs on a GISA 1003 on a Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master. So, you know, we're able to run 128 gigs. I know it's not super fast, uh, but if you care about density and you're going to be playing games at like 4K anyway and you need to use the PC for you know, actual works related tasks, then this makes a lot of sense. So hope you guys found this video useful. I will recommend SK Hynix is definitely the way to go if you don't want to mess too much with, you know, lowering some timings and that sort of thing. So uh, hope you guys found this video useful and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.